White flag is raised. They're off in the first grade one of the day, the Coolmore Q Gardens Irish EBF Mares Champion Hurdle. Over two miles, three furlongs extended. They have 11 flights to jump and setting off to make the running is Stormy Ireland over the first she goes from Burning Victory. Marys Rock is in third place, followed by Stable Companion and favorite Epitant. Tell me something, girl, next on the inside of Mrs. Milner. She wears it well as two behind, Paula Tess and Dicer Diamond, as they leave behind them flight number two. In the lead and clear is Stormy Ireland, bidding to repeat last year's win. Is fairly clocking it on the turn into the straight. Eight in front of Burning Victory and third is Murray's Rock. And then Epitone, followed by Tell Me Something Girl and Mrs. Milner. And she wears it well, Paula Tess and Dicer Diamond. On they come to flight number three, the last one next time. And it's Stormy Island and Danny Mullins clear to the field. Burning Victory, Paul Town, and in second. In third place, Marie's Rock. Nico de Boinville and then Epitone and Aiden Coleman. On board the six-time grade one winning mayor, then tell me something, girl, and Rachel Blackmore. They're followed past the winning post by Mrs. Milner and Brian Cooper. She wears it well, and Sean O'Keefe, with two and a half lengths to the final couple, Paula Tess, Connor Orr, and Dicer Diamond, Brian Hayes. Rising to flight number four, Stormy Ireland, upholding a sizable advantage over Burning Victory, who has closed a little. In third place in the nose band is Marie's Rock, and then Epitone who measured the flight in fourth ahead of Tell Me Something Girl, and she wears it well, Mrs. Milner, Politesse, and Dicer Diamond. As they corner to flight number five, and nicely spaced out, very little changes in the order of running. It's Stormy Island all the while coming back to Stable Companion Burning Victory. Flicking overs in third place, Marie's Rock, who's followed by Epitone, and then Tell Me Something Girl. She wears it well next on the inside of Mrs. Milner as Dicer Diamond relegates Politesse to be last of the nine. Heading downhill to the next flight, which is the sixth, bringing them to the halfway stage. And the field is compacted. Stormy Ireland falls back to Burning Victory, Marie's Rock in third, and Epitone in fourth. No changes in the top four. And then tell me something, girl, and she wears it well, and Mrs. Milner dice her diamond on the outside of Paula Tess. About to turn into the back straight with five flights left to jump. Eight, ten lengths covering the nine. Stormy Ireland by a diminishing length to Burning Victory, a length and a half to Marie's Rock in third, and Epiton in fourth place. Then tell me something, girl. She wears it well upside, Mrs. Milner, and then Paula Tess and dice her diamond. They go down the back straight, five flights to jump. Burning Victory. Left her hind ones in it. Stormy Island did on the inside. Then Murray's Rock and Epiton. She wears it well as they head towards the fourth last flight. With a mile left to go, Stormy Island burning victory. Closely followed by Marie's Rock. Epiton next on the outside of Tell Me Something Girl. Then she wears it well. Mrs. Milner is two behind Dicer Diamond and Paula Tess. The fourth last flight taking them back to their point of departure. Down is Tell Me Something Girl. Heading towards the five furlong point with three flights to jump. And still in front is Stormy Ireland. By two lengths to Burning Victory, joined for second by Marie's Rock. Poised in fourth is Epitante, and she wears it well. Mrs. Milner, Politez, and Dicer Diamond back at the rear once more with half a mile to go and three flights to jump in the Cool Mork Kew Gardens Irish EBF Mare's Champion Hurdle. Stormy Ireland yet to be headed. Burning Victory disputes second place with Marie's Rock. Epitone right in behind them, which she wears it well. Driven is Mrs. Milner. A gap to Politez and Dicer Diamond. They come to the second last. Stormy Ireland by two lengths to Marie's Rock who's just won the second spot from Burning Victory. Epiton is now shaken up on the outside, then she wears it well, who improves in by the rail. Mrs. Milner next, but it's Stormy Island into the straight three, clear from Marie's Rock. Epiton gets a couple of reminders to try and close, then she wears it well. Burning Victory weakens ahead of Mrs. Milner, racing down to the final flight, and Stormy Island has kicked away from the field. Epiton on the outside of Marie's Rock, and then she wears it well, and Burning Victory down to the final flight. It's Stormy Ireland from Epiton and Marie's Rock bearing down. The final flight, Stormy Ireland from Marie's Rock. On the outside is Epiton, 150 yards left to go. Stormy Ireland, Marie's Rock is coming in the center. Marie's Rock runs down Stormy Ireland and Epiton. Marie's Rock, beat out game.
Dame Stormy Ireland, epitome in third and burning victory. She wears it well. Mrs. Vanda Marie's rock is the Colmore EBF. Merge champion for Nikki Henderson. They go to Boyneville. Nico de Boinville just won the Grade 1 Coolmore Kew Gardens Irish European Breeders Fund champion hurdle. Well done, some performance. Stamina really played. It did very much. I thought this rain has definitely got in. I know it hasn't been hard rain, but it has definitely got in a bit. Um, she showed a lot of guts going down to the last. Um, I've ridden, I've had three rides this week, and it's just proven to me, you know, how tough and, you know, you have to have speed and stamina around here, and you really do have to stay. And uh, she stays, which was which was fantastic. So, uh, no, delighted with her, and all credit to the governor for getting a spot on and bringing her from. You know, we were in trouble last year, and this year it's suddenly all come together. So, fantastic. And of course, she was brilliant at Cheltenham, winning her first of two Grade Ones, and she's an improving mare, isn't she? She very much so. As I said, it's been a steady progress this year, and um, we've just had to be patient with her, and it just shows patience does does pay off. And of course, three runs ago, I think it was at Newbury, just things went awry. You nearly got brought down, I think, at the second that day. Yeah, that was at Kempton in the Kempton. yeah in the Lanzarote there, and um, uh, she's so gutsy. She sort of took me back into the race, but then I pulled her up, you know, in good time. So she should come back, you know, win a nice little mare's listed race at Warwick, and then it was on to Cheltenham, and effectively it started a nice prep. Here's the governor now for you. <laughs> Nikki, many congratulations. Yet another winner at Punchestown. You've had some brilliant days here. Well, we have. But after the drumming we've been taking at Cheltenham over the last couple of years, it's nice to at least come and get one back. <laughs> and obviously, boat mares, fair play, you brought the two of them over, Epitant, you invited the honeysuckle yesterday, and Maria's rocked the improver, let both of them take their chances. Well, that, yes, I mean, there was, we, we armed it out whether to take on honeysuckle with Epitant, but she proved she did stay two and a half at Aintree. Um, I was suspicious, you know, she just might be better going the other way round, Epiton. He said she was struggling a bit there, but she still ran a great race and, and she's finished it off really well. I mean, they set off to test Epiton's stamina, there was no doubt about that. But of course, having said that, that's probably helped Marie's rock. So it works both ways. And she's. She's really stepped up. I know she's had a trouble path along the way early on in her career, but things have fallen right for her now, and obviously she was very good at winning the Mayor's Hurdle at Cheltenham, and she's equally as good today. Well, in her, when she won her first three starts in her first year, I thought she was going to be a star. And then she got an injury and couldn't run at the last minute of Cheltenham, and I felt desperate for Midland Park. They're a fantastic outfit. Tom Palin, who runs it, and all their great you know their team of supporters and the you know that the, the, they're in this they are fantastic and it's a great thrill to give that many people you know to join in with something as big as this Cheltenham and Budgetown and I admire the team enormously and but you know last year was an absolute disaster as far as Marie's Rock was concerned I couldn't find her at all I'd lost her and we turned her out and she went up to uh, George and Dan Duffields and, and um, had a good summer and she came back in and things went well from there on in. Just one blip in the Lanzarote when she got badly bumped at the first and that was the end of the game. Otherwise she'd actually be unbeaten this season. And that must have frustrated you last season. You knew how potentially good this mare was. Could you pinpoint anything? Did anything no. come to life? She just wasn't with us at all. I completely lost her. Which can often be the case at Mayor. It can, but funny enough, when you do lose them, it's quite, they're, they're harder than the boys to get back in a funny way. Do you know what I mean? They can, you know, they can be good, and, but when they've gone, they sometimes stay gone. You're no better guy to get them back. You've got plenty of them back in the past. <laughs> well, we try. She's only seven. She's now obviously won a dual grade one winner. I presume she'll be kept in training next year. You would hope, fingers crossed, there's more to come from her. I hope she will because, I mean, obviously she's a valuable broodmare prospect. Um, you know, we bought her as a store and, and, you know, this is sort of dreams to reality, really. Um, as I say, for a very enthusiastic team, it's fun. I hope she'll race on. I mean, nobody's even begun to discuss it and 
I don't think I'll bring the subject up, actually. I don't think it's a good no, idea. <laughs> I, don't know why. I don't think she's a chaser either, to be honest with you, but um, she probably would jump a fence. I've never even asked Nico that, but I'm not sure I would. I think I'd stick to this game and try and defend these titles. That's what they're there for, and let's try and get them back. And Nico, he got her into a beautiful rhythm, beautiful yeah, position, got a lovely run. Didn't he? Lovely ride, lovely ride. You won't see better, and it's not as if we're playing on our home track either, so takes a bit of knowing and it takes a bit of pace judgment you know that was fast and furious but we wanted to come late um, yeah it was late but it was it, but you, you know you always felt she was going to get there were you slightly well, well, concerned got to say turning in I didn't think she was yeah, that's what I think we are yeah yeah <laughs> but yeah, once she got into once she was running up that hill she was running but of course you knew stamina was going to kick in which is one of her very strong points well I think that's probably her strongest suit in that that, you know, you, you got the feeling they were trying to test Epiton's stamina, which would have been correct tactics, but on the other hand, that's probably paid into Marie's Rock's hands, so, you know, that's why you need two in a race, isn't it? And Nicky, you've got a massive following here in Ireland throughout the world, but it always means a lot to you to have a winner. You've had some great days here at Punchestown, and you got a great reception coming back in. Is it still as special now as it was when you started having winners here all those years ago? Well, we love it. It's just good fun, and I mean, it's the end of the season. It's a bit of a, it's a bit of a party. I mean, how will he makes it a party when he has 90 odd runners? I've no idea, but it's um, it, it's great fun. We love it. Um, and you know you, you just always feel after Cheltenham. Come on, let's go and see if we can <laughs> just get something back. And you know if you go, if you get a great one here, it's um, you know it's 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 very special. It's very special for these Phillies as well, you know. But um, no, we love it, and I mean, we've been doing it for years and had some great days. I think the day Sprinter Sacra came here was probably one of the memorable ones of my life because um, the crowd. They're friends and they love horse racing and you know we just love being part of it. Well, Nicky, you're a great friend to Punches and you're a great friend to Irish racing. Many congratulations, well done. Thanks very much.